places for rest and contemplation. Lord Burley, we are not at all tired, nor do we wish to miss any of the entertainments prepared for us by the good people of this shire. Must I remind your majesty as to the reason for your visit to the shire of Stirling? To remove our person from the hustle and bustle of London. And? And the intrigue of the court. To? This idyllic pastoral setting. And? Finally name an heir to the throne. William, our progress has hardly begun. There will be ample time to consider weighty matters of state before our return to London. Majesty, I must needs be blunt. Father Time does not work on thy side. Master Burley, we are not yet so old but that we might not produce a child of our body. Fine! If thou wouldst rather name a husband than an heir, I shall be happy to inform the lucky man and begin immediate preparations for the royal nuptials. Why, with a little bit of luck, we can have thee wedded and bedded before nightfall! My lord, you do all reach. I beg pardon, your majesty. I do so only out of great care for thee. For if some pretender takes matters into his own hand at the cost of thine own dear life, I would gladly give my own life to prevent such a calamity. Dear William, we are cognizant that thou dost strive for the good of the realm. But I cannot agree that naming an heir will somehow magically ensure my safety. Has not heard uneasy lies the head that wears a crown. Aye. Master Shakespeare put those words into Bolingbroke's mouth just before he usurped his cousin Richard's throne. And if I'm correct, which I usually am, set brother against brother on each other for nigh on a hundred years. Just the sort of outcome, Your Majesty, which will occur if we do not have a clear line of succession. Now I am becoming weird. <sighs> Your Majesty, please at least consider the matter. The chance does not begin until two Very well. Out of our very great regard for thee, we shall think of it. Thou hast leave to depart for half an hour, no all. Majesty. Poor man. I dare say I lead him a merry dance. Still, I cannot but feel that he is mistook in this matter. He cannot know what it is like. One day to be next in line to the throne, cosseted and beloved, and then declared a bastard and re relegated to obscurity. Too well I remember mine own tenuous and ever-changing position, and those who would have manipulated my status for their own ends. Quandary makes my head ache. Just as we might have predicted, she sleeps whilst our country goes to rack and ruin. Elizabeth. Dear sister, spawn of a harlot! What? What is it? Mary? Is it thee? Art thou spirit come to haunt me, or but a dream haunted by my the grave? Whether I be rape or memory, it matters not. Oh, it is good to breathe the fresh air again, to feel the sun and wind upon my face. Can such things be? <laughs> Elizabeth, thy marked indifference has drawn me to turn thee from thy, thy perilous path. I know not whereof thou speaks. Thy selfish refusal to name an heir puts the very realm in jeopardy. Selfish? Oh, almost as selfish as thy refusal to marry. Does any Tudor blood run in thy veins, or art thou completely bold? Duty means nothing. How darest thou speak to me thus? Dare? We are thine elder and thy predecessor, not some hapless servant. Thine ire does not frighten us. Oh God, I will not stand for this. Wilt thou rail, or wilt thou hear our counsel? Wilt thou leave off insulting me? Agreed. I see that age hath not improved thee, nor death thee. Touché. French from the great Spanish home. Elizabeth. I have come to give thee counsel. Wilt thou hear it? Twas a childish thing to say. I will hear thee. But first I must ask, what is it like, death? Dost thou inhabit the heaven thou wast so assured of by thy priests? I, I faith I know not. I, I remember shades of my life, and I know why I have come to thee. But as for the time between, It is not meant for those of us who have passed to 
share such secrets to those who have yet to make for the great journey. Die, sleep, sleep perchance to dream. Ah, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. It appears that death for me shall remain a mystery. Oh. My mind tells me that thou art doomed to hell if thou dost not return to Mother Church, but my lips will not form the word. Yet, in my heart, I know that my belief is true. Let us leave off theology. It was ever an ill subject between us. Why didst thou question my duty? I have pledged my life to thee. What of the chaos that will follow when thy life is ended? It is a disservice to our people to not make clear provision for the next ruler. Thou shouldst have married and born a child. And whom should I have wed? An English nobleman? Orkney, Arundel, Pickering, Norfolk, Leicester. Queen's Wolf not. The council would never allow it. A foreign prince then. Charles of Austria, Eric of Sweden, Anjou, Alençon, Philip. Did he make the offer? No, he never loved me. That was always thy great error, Mary. Royal marriage is not about love, it is about politics. You were a hopeless romantic. I was a great queen. I returned the people to the true church. I, I married Philip of Spain in order to make a strong alliance against France. I tried to give the kingdom an heir, but you failed. A husband is no guarantee of a child, as I know to my grief. At any rate, the point is moot. There will be no child in my body. Then thou hast no choice but to name which of our cousins is to follow thee. Our father's will is clear. Our father's will is clear, but is it legal? Edward, you, me, perfectly straightforward. But then it becomes more complicated. His will gives preference to the descendants of his younger sister, Mary, disinheriting the descendants of his older sister, Margaret. Unorthodox, I grant thee, but perfectly understandable, given that Margaret went off to live in Scotland. I do not see thy problem. Name Mary's granddaughter, Catherine Gray, thine heir. Catherine is a fool and married to a Seymour. The moment I grant legitimacy to her claim, she becomes a focus for rebellion, just as her poor sister Jane was before. Well, then name Mary, Queen of Scots, thine heir. And go against our father's will. Well, at least she is already a queen. And a Catholic. Oh, that's the problem. I think you would. <laughs> oh, these are spurious excuses. Well, it is thine own mortality thou art afraid to face. Thinkest thou that if thou dost not have an heir, thou wilt never die? Hypocrite! Thou didst not name me heir until thou wert on my deathbed and would not have named thee then, but I was forced by the council. Then how darest thou criticize my decision when thou hadst the same reluctance? Oh, Clotpole! I was not reluctant to name an heir. I was reluctant to name thee heir. But I am thy sister. Half-sister, bastard, and the daughter of the great whore. How dare you? Oh, I should have beheaded thee when I had the chance. I should like to see thee try it. Oh, give me an axe! Silence! <laughs> God, this caterwauling is enough to raise the dead! <laughs> there, that's better. Good obedient daughters, not brawling fishwives. Rise up, girls, rise up. Not exactly girls. Why the row? And where's your brother Edward? Edward is dead, father, as am I. As art thou. Dead, you say? Ah! I felt better in my life. Father. And who is your husband, the king? She is a spinster, father. What? One of my girls? Not possible. It hath pleased God that I should be the bride of England and mother of its people. I have devoted my life to their service. And if thou hast no son, who shall follow you when thou art gone? She has yet to name an heir, father. Of course, Mary, our daughter, granddaughter of thy sister Margaret, is closest in blood. But far from the throne, by thy will and by thy Scottish power. And by thy hatred of Catholics. Oh, just never have I persecuted Catholics. There have been no burning for nonconformity in my reign. Oh, and many will burn in hell for the lack of them. Be silent. Oh, pardon, Father. Think all that I endure to leave a secure realm in a stable succession, all to have it undone by the next generation. The, the realm is peaceful and prosperous, sire. Aye, for now, perhaps. <laughs> But thou hast shown a lamentable lack of judgment. We are gravely disappointed in thee. Ha! 
And art thou any better? If thou had done thy duty and given England an heir, Elizabeth would not now be queen. Obviously, you're no better breeding stock than your mother. I wish my Edward had lived. He would have made me proud. Edward was a fine king, father. Oh, Edward was a heretic and a puppet. And thou wast a fanatic who terrorized thy people and sent good men, honorable men, to the pyre because they would not renounce their beliefs. Oh, to save one soul, I would again see thousands burn. The light of my own reasoning, there's a candle to light thee to bed. Silence! <laughs> Enough! My God! Will I never be. Will I never hear the end of the squabbling? This is the curse of Distaff. Two sisters, six wives, countless mistresses, two daughters, and never a moment's peace from the lot of you! Enough! Mary, thou art dismissed. decision is your legacy. My father founded this dynasty in a blaze of glory. Do not let it sputter out in ignominy. Your father, wait. Advise me. Tell me what to do. Make me proud, Bess. Phantoms of the air or phantoms of my mind? If the former, then their counsel is no counsel. If the latter, then I torment myself. They say I must choose but give no guidance as to the choice. They prophesy harm to the realm if I abstain, but, but do not convince that action betters inaction. They cannot see that their choices are but Scylla and Charybdis. Catherine Gray, weak, vain, tied to an unscrupulous family. Mary Stuart, Scottish-born, French-reared, Catholic. Father, thou hast said my successor will be my legacy. Thou art mistook. My legacy shall be my reign, the peace and prosperity of my land, and the happiness of my people. I will not be thought a failure for that I did not bear a child, have I not nurtured my people? Have I not fought and schemed and cajoled and defied all the princes in Europe solely that mine might be the only hand to guide the ship of state? Of all Englishmen living, only I know the danger of having an inheritor waiting for wings. Mine is the duty. Mine the responsibility. I will trust my heart in this and wait until the elements so conjoin as to make me certain sure in my decision. Pointed out, Master. And right glad we are on it. We have done as thou bade us. We have considered our duty and are ready to resume our practice. And thou hast made a decision? All in good time, my wise counselor, all in good time. Or oh, do not jousters wait to try their skill in the lists? Is there not dancing and feasting and music awaiting us? Aye, Your Majesty. Then come, my old friend. Life is short. And after all, 